Hello everyone and welcome to my latest vacuum cleaner review. Today this is for all you Miele fans out there because I will be doing a full review and demonstration of this Miele Revolution 5000 vacuum cleaner. Now I believe in the United States this was known as the Miele Capricorn but in the UK and possibly other parts of Europe this was known as a Miele Revolution. This is part of two models they did with a power head. They did this model, the Revolution 5000. They also did one in a garnet red colour that had a bigger power head. In fact, it came with this power head. So this is the big daddy power head that I have for this machine as well, but it didn't come standard with that. I bought that separately. This particular version came with this slightly smaller power head, still very efficient and we'll soon be finding out how efficient when I do my review but um, it's a lot lighter, easier to handle than this huge beast but I do find this big electro premium power head does do a better job. In fact it has the same brush roll as you'll find on the Miele upright cleaners. So this is it, the Miele Revolution. Now it's not a current model, but we have just learnt from Miele that very shortly they will be relaunching a machine with a power head for the UK market. I believe it's already available in Germany. But um, Miele stopped making power head cleaners for the UK several years ago, which is a bit of a shame. All we got was a straight suction cleaner or a machine with a turbo driven power head, an air driven power head, turbo head, but not an electrically driven head. So there was a bit of a gap in the market, but Miele have decided to relaunch a vacuum cleaner based on the S8 series with this premium head. But currently, the manufacturer's recommended retail price on Miele's website is £600, which is rather a lot, but I do expect to see that price coming down from other retailers. If I can afford one, I may be getting one of those at some point. And of course, if I do, I'll be doing a full demo and review of it. Okay then, let's take a look at this Miele Revolution in a bit more detail. I'll show you the basic features and then we'll do some performance testing. Right, first of all, I'm going to focus on the cleaner itself before I talk about the hose and the power head that you get with this model. So it's based on the S5. It's still a current body shape. You can still buy S5 cleaners. Even some of the new Eco versions Miele are offering in this body shape. This is the shape that came before the S8. It has some advantages over the S8 and some disadvantages as well. The S8 is a bit lighter and has a longer cord. But they're still both excellent cleaners. I'd recommend either. But my review is focusing on this one in particular, so that's what I'm going to do. There's not many controls on the actual machine because this cleaner does have a remote control that controls all the basic functions. But on the cleaner, at the back, we have a foot-operated on-off pedal. You won't need to use that most of the time if you leave it in the on position because it does have an on-off switch on the handle. You also have your foot operated cord rewind. This differs to the S8 and S6 series, it's not the comfort rewind. So when you do rewind the flex on this model, you have to keep your foot or your hand on the pedal constantly in order to rewind it. On the newer versions, the S8, S6s, you just press it once and it rewinds the cord for you. So again, that's an advantage on the newer models that this doesn't have. You also have a mains on light here. This is a warning light. If the machine overheats, the machine will turn itself off and that will glow. And then you need to unplug the machine and let it cool before continuing your cleaning. But if that does light up, you do need to check that your bag isn't full, that you haven't got a blockage or that your filters don't need replacing. Then we've got a light that illuminates about, I don't know if it's about a year, or it's a number of hours anyway, after the machine's been switched on. It knows how many hours it's been running for, and that will glow when you need to change the HEPA filter. And when you have changed the HEPA filter, there's this reset button here, 
which you just have to press and then you can continue to use the machine. We've got the main exhaust vent coming out here at the top. This also has a parking bracket which you can park all the tools, well the floor tools, you can park your smaller power head, the one that this came with, or this is the other nozzle this came with, a standard carpet and floor nozzle. You can park that on there as well. Not only does it store the tool to park it, it also turns the motor off. So if the motor's running and you pop that in, it will switch the motor off because there's a little switch in here. Not all of them have a switch. Most Mealers do have this sort of parking bracket, but it's only the sort of top line models that actually switch off when you've parked and they will automatically turn on again when you remove the nozzle. Inside we have your three small tools on board. So we have your standard Miele upholstery nozzle. I do apologise this has been used so there's a bit of muck on it. And that's very effective for cleaning your upholstery. You can do stairs with it and your curtains. Should have given this a bit of a dust, I've just noticed it's uh, a bit mucky, but anyway. Here's your dusting brush, quite nice soft brushes on this one. This is a natural bristle one, some of the basic models have a much more stiffer synthetic brush, but this is softer, so that's good for doing your Venetian blinds, your bookcases, your pelmets, tops of skirting boards, that sort of thing. And of course you can adjust it to different angles to suit whatever you're cleaning. And then finally, sword on board is a very short and stubbly little crevice tool. It's probably only about 15 centimetres that, where you'd find a standard crevice tool that doesn't store on board would be about 30 centimetres. But it's useful enough. Miele do do the option of you can buy a longer one if you want, or you can actually buy Miele do a very long, flexible one, which is ideal for cleaning down the sides of your appliances in your kitchen. But those three tools are stored conveniently on the machine under this flap. So when you need them, you just press this button here, select the tool you need, and Bob's your uncle. Also, on the top of the machine, we have your bag check indicator. As you're using the machine, this will fluctuate between black and orange. And obviously when the indicator is showing nearly all orange, it's time to check your bag. It's not all that accurate. I always go by my own judgment. I check the bag from time to time rather than relying on this indicator. And at the top here, because this has a power head and a power hose, there's the power takeoff socket which, which provides power to the remote control and the power head. You've got dual storage slash parking brackets either side of this cleaner. So again, this enables you to store the main floor tools or the power head on the side. That's useful when you're storing it away, keeps everything together, or if you're carrying the machine upstairs, it just gives you an extra pair of hands really because you're carrying this. Obviously you'd have the tube attached normally in the hose. On the back we have three swivel casters. Typical Miele quality, I mean very smooth running and very robust and you've got this plastic well it's that sort of rubberized finish really all round here goes all round the machine to protect the machine and your furniture and on the back here we've got these little pad things I don't know what you'd call them but that just makes the machine more stable when it's stood upright. So for example, if you're cleaning the stairs, it will stand on a standard stair. And because the exhaust vents from the front, it's not blocked off. Some machines, the exhaust vent from the rear here. So when you put it in this position, it does obstruct the airflow. But on this me machine, this Miele, as on most Mielers, the air exhausts out of this way. So as long as you don't use the cleaner that way against the stairs, you should be fine. So that's the main machine itself. Very man manoeuvrable.
and fairly compact but obviously it is a larger machine. If you want something smaller and lighter I suggest you look at one of the S6 cleaners. Right then, let's have a look at the remote control and power head. So this is the hand grip you get supplied with this Milo Evolution. It's full remote control so we can control the suction level, we can turn the machine on and off and we can also turn the power head on and off. It's very comfortable to hold, it's a nice comfortable design and you've also got this swivel action here. In addition to that the hose does rotate 360 degrees at the handle end only, it's fixed at the machine end and the hose actually carries the electrical conductors that not only provide power to this remote control but also power to this little takeoff socket here which in turn provides the power to the supplied power head. So nothing's happening at the moment with this remote control because I initially need to turn it on at the machine. Let's turn it off. So now it's in standby which is indicated here by this amber light. So now I don't have to return to the cleaner, I can control it all from this hand grip. So as you can see, if I was to turn it on now, it would start off in minimum setting, indicated by this one green light. So minimum, that's suitable for doing your very delicate fabrics and curtains. The setting up from that is the recommended setting for your upholstery. Then the setting up from that is for lightweight rugs. The next setting is a silent setting and that combines a low noise level with an average sort of suction. I mean it's going to be good enough for cleaning mostly everything but at a lower power level. So it's good if you need to clean up late at night but you don't want to disturb your kids if they're in bed or your neighbours. The next setting is recommended for your carpets, fitted carpets, wall-to-wall -wall carpets and the maximum Miele suggests to use that for hard floors. I'll just explain the buttons. You've got a plus and minus, so obviously plus increases the suction, minus decreases it. This button switches the machine on and off and this button here controls the power head. Now you can just turn it on and off using this button or, unless I'm very much mistaken, I'll be able to turn it on using the plus button. So by pressing the plus button straight away it went to full power as indicated by the green lights. But I can start it off on minimum by pressing the minus. But if I want to increase it as I'm cleaning I just press the plus button. So there we have it. That's everything you need in your hand to control your cleaner. Right, now this extension wand, because it carries the electrical conductors, it does make it heavier. Now the later versions, this is in a shiny chrome or stainless steel finish. This particular one I've got came in this sort of anthracite, I believe Mila called it. So it's telescopic. <laughs> but it is fairly heavy because of course it carries the extra conductors and it does have a connection here which meets up with the plug on the end of the handle. So now I can put my Miele Electro Plus power nozzle onto the end of the extension tube and everything fits together nicely, it clicks in place We've got Miele's switch operated release, so to release this Electro Plus head or your main carpet and floor head, you just press there and pull it out. Everything clicks together in a nice satisfying way. And of course if I want to release the extension tube, I just press on that and pull it out. You can connect any of the tools directly to the handle if you want to. So that's useful if you're cleaning inside the car, you need, in a tighter space, <clears throat> you don't want to be using the extension tube. 
all the tools will fit on, even the power nozzle. Now that makes it ideal if you want to give your stairs a really deep clean. You can remove the wand and now we have got a fantastic handheld type device. So now we've got the power of the Miele suction combined with the electro brush to really deep clean your stairs. Often people just use um, a small handheld cleaner on their stairs or straight suction and they will benefit from time to time using a power nozzle on them because it'll help bring the pile up and release any dirt that perhaps a straight suction nozzle has left in the stairs. When you're using the Electro Plus nozzle this little green light will come on. So at the moment the Electro Plus nozzle isn't operating because I've not switched it on here so I need to press this button here and now you can see that the Electro Plus nozzle is rotating and a I do apologise for that mess. Got a few bits of uh, threads and fibres caught around here. That doesn't matter. All you need to do, you can get a coin or a screwdriver and you can open this part up and then you have easy access to this brush. There's not much stuff here so I can just pull most of that off. This is good if you've got people with long hair or you've got dogs with long hair. This mess has been caused by my dogs, but not from their hair, it's from their rope chew toys that they like to pull to bits. So it doesn't take long really to clean that up. If I want to do a more thorough clean, like I say, I can just undo these two screw top things and take the whole base plate off, then have better access also, if a blockage occurred in the nozzle, I could take that off. So, I'll just get rid of this bit of mess here. So, like I say, that is the nozzle that's supplied with this version. But, depending on which model you go for, you might get the larger head with it, or you might be able to buy it as an option. I will be doing a video demonstrating this machine with the larger head and probably I'll be doing a comparison. This is a very efficient nozzle but it'd be good to put my dirt on the carpet and we'll do one sweep back and forth with this nozzle and then next to it we'll do another sweep with a bigger nozzle and to see if there's any major difference in the pickup performance. Speaking of pickup performance, I'm going to go into my kitchen now and test this on hard floors. I'm first going to use this nozzle but with the brush turned off and then we'll see how the straight suction nozzle on the hard floor setting does. Well you find me in the kitchen now with a lot of mess to clean up. Right on this floor we've got some wood shavings, some flour, some couscous, some rice, some bran flakes and New and exclusive for this video, for the first time, we've got some dog food, dry dog food. Fairly small, it's like a small bite, but it's quite a large particle. I'm not really thinking that this machine will pick this up. I think it'll probably just push those along. But anyway, I thought we'd try because this is the sort of thing you would spill in your kitchen. The dogs, unless they're like my dogs and of course if anything does drop on the kitchen floor then it won't be there for much longer but if you've got a fussy dog who likes to tip food out of their bowl and leave it then you'd be interested to see if the meal will pick it up. So anyway I'm going to do one section of this using the Electro Plus nozzle but with the brush turned off and then to compare I'm going to use the standard carpet and floor head to do another section. Right, here goes. First of all, it's going to be on full power of the machine, but like I say, the electro brush will be stationary. Now, not very good. 
it has snow ploughed a lot but I think it's possibly because this floor isn't stuck down it has sucked the floor into the nozzle which has made matters worse what I'm going to do just go over it again to smooth the camera just go over it again part in this area here but with a bit of a lower power just to see if it'll pick it up without sucking the floor into the nozzle so I'll do it on the setting suitable for upholstery a slight improvement this is a case when less is more, less suction power is better but it's still snow ploughing a bit so really it's not all that good on hard floors but if your floors are stuck down, if they're tiled or wooden it might be okay but in my test it has snow ploughed quite a lot of the dirt right I'm going to fit on the standard carpet and floor nozzle and we'll see how that fares okay so it's the same sort of dirt, I've just had to spread it out a bit, the dirt that uh, the power head snow ploughed, I've just gone down and just sort of spread it just to get an idea but as you can see really all the bigger particles like these dog food, dry dog food pellets and the bran flakes they've remained so we'll see if this standard floor head which was supplied with this cleaner is going to fare any better, I'll use it on maximum which is the suggested setting and of course I've got the brush in the down position Again, not very good really, although I don't think because of the brush that goes all around the head it actually wasn't sticking to the floor, it was easy to push but again it was snow ploughing the dirt as you can see there so I will be able to clean this up, it just means I'll have to lift the nozzle slightly if I was to clean this area without lifting the nozzle I think I'd still be left with some of this dirt, so that's what I'm going to do just finish off by cleaning the area without lifting the nozzle and then if there's any muck left I will have to lift the nozzle for the remaining bit Unfortunately, it's left quite a lot. In fact, if I shake, shake the nozzle, it hasn't done a very good job really. I mean, I will be able to clean everything up, but it does mean tilting the nozzle in order for the bigger particles to be sucked into the airstream. It has coped all the flowers gone and the salt, the fine particles, but there's still bits of rice, I can't see any couscous but there's still bits of rice there and um, the sawdust, a few bran flakes there's the odd um, dog biscuit thing as well now one final thing I will do I do have another nozzle, the Miele Parquet nozzle let's see if that fares any better on this hard floor now this is a nozzle I use myself whenever I'm using a Miele vacuum cleaner to clean hard floors I always get this Parquet twister head out it's the one I prefer to use and it has a very large opening for the bigger particles but the brushes, although they do have gaps here some of the larger particles may still be snow ploughed as you can see it has been used but I do like this nozzle 
because it does twist and turn and it gets into a lot of awkward places where you can't get the main nozzle. Like I said, this wasn't supplied with my machine, it was an optional extra, but in some countries it might come with your particular variant, it depends. If you've got lots of hard floors to clean, this is definitely a nozzle to go for. But again, it might still snow plow some of the large particles, but I know it will pick up everything eventually. As I thought, yes, it has done a bit of snow ploughing. Let's pan down a bit, excuse the squeak. It's pushed some of the debris along, but that's not so bad. I don't often spill large particles on my floor. These will be removed. All I need to do is tilt the nozzle back when I'm cleaning. So we got there in the end. It's excellent, either of the nozzles really, the standard nozzle or this parquet twister. It's excellent for general cleaning of hard floors, but it's not so good if you've got larger particles. But it will pick them up, you just have to tilt the nozzle back just to, do it to enable the dirt to go up the tube. Okay then, so not so bad on floors, but not excellent. Let's go over into the living room now and see how the power head copes with my bag of filth. Right, I've had to put some shoes on for this. This is rather a lot of mess, probably more mess than I've put down for most of my reviews. On here is a combination, there's a lot of dog hair including some big clumps of it. There's dust, there's paper, there's wood shavings. There's all sorts in here. It's all been recycled from various demos. Various vacuum cleaners have helped provide this mess for the test on the Miele Revolution. Now, despite the name Revolution, obviously it comes with a power head. I'm going to do one side of the carpet with the straight suction nozzle and I'm going to use it on the setting Miele suggests for carpets. So I'm going to go forward and back using straight suction we'll have a look at the results and then I'll do another path next to it using the power head. See what sort of difference there will be. I think there will be quite a difference. So, on with the regular head and I make sure it's on the carpet setting so it's brushes up for carpets and I'll make sure it's on the setting that's just one below maximum. snow ploughed a lot of the larger dirt you couldn't see it but as I went off camera there's a little pile you can just can't see I'll just tilt down and show you can you quite catch there it is this little pile there that the nozzle pushed away so all in all it's what I thought it's picked up a lot of the surface dirt it's picked up most of the wood shavings and the bits of paper and it's picked up a lot of the larger clumps of the dog hair but looking closer 
This carpet looks very hairy still to my eyes and probably, hopefully the camera will pick that up. So, as I thought, it's not done a fantastic job. It's done an okay job and it would eventually get everything up. If I was to go over a few times, it would pick it all up. But for the first back and forward stroke using just the suction, not very successful. Okay, I'm going to clean this side of the carpet now, but I'm attaching the Electro power head. Well, here I am, ready to try out the Electro Plus power head. I'm going to still use the same suction setting as I did with the straight suction nozzle, but obviously now we've got the suction combined with a rotating brush. So we'll see what sort of difference that makes. Now then, can we see a difference? Can we see a difference on camera? I can. I can certainly see a difference. I think you can just about pick it up on camera. It's more or less got everything, the larger particles and the smaller particles. And there is no line of shame either. It is, the path that it's cleaned, it's clean. So compared to the straight suction path that got a lot of the dirt off but it didn't do as well as this nozzle and I knew it wouldn't. To get really thoroughly cleaned carpets in my opinion you do need some sort of agitation and an electro head or even a turbo head does provide some but in my personal opinion a power head that's got an, its own separate electric motor will perform better than some of the air powered nozzles. There's some good air powered nozzles, but I've always liked a power head. And the same goes if I was to do this test with an upright cleaner. In general, a good upright cleaner would do far better than even a very good straight suction cylinder, as this test has shown. Well, I don't think I'm going to struggle cleaning all this up with straight suction. I'll continue to use this power head and remove the rest of this dirt. Well, I'm going to have to give that 5 out of 5 for performance on carpets. Despite the fact that it is the smallest power head Miele produce, it has still done an excellent job. I've got the Miele Revolution at the bottom of my stairs now, just to see how far the hose will stretch before I have to carry the machine or balance it on the stair next to me. So it'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six. So the hose is long enough to safely clean six steps with the machine at the bottom and like I say I've got the power head attached directly to the handle so now I can really give my stairs a deep clean But obviously you can use the smaller nozzle if you prefer, but 
once in a while your stairs will benefit from having a good clean with the Electro Plus nozzle. So the rest of the stairs can be cleaned with the machine stood on the step next to me but you just have to be careful you don't knock it down the stairs. But I'll show you it will actually fit on a standard stair. So as you can see I've got the machine balanced on a step so I can easily clean the rest of my stairs now. Well that's the demo over, all I have to do now is wind up the flex. Before I do my summing up, I thought I'd show you the bag and the filter system. To access the bag, all we have to do is open up the lid here and we can see the Miele High Clean bag and Miele's HEPA filter. You'll notice that when I opened the bag door this little flap closes. There is a seal on here. Some dust will escape, but the disposal of dirt in a bagged machine, especially a Miele bagged machine, is a lot cleaner than emptying a bagless bin. So, to remove the full bag, all we have to do is pull this collar and take the bag away and pop it in the bin. Now that bag, although it is very full, I'd say about 80% full, I can still continue to use that until it is 100% full and I will not notice a dramatic drop in suction or performance. In fact the demonstration I did using the power head, this bag was already pretty full and obviously I had added to the fullness of the bag with what I threw onto the kitchen floor but I continued to use the machine with the same bag in. These are very efficient bags. They are a bit on the pricey side, especially in the USA. So you've got to factor in the cost of replacement bags and filters when you buy a Miele. But it's, it's what you want to do. Do you want to buy bags and filters or do you want to have to keep washing filters on a bagless machine? And do you want the extra mess that some bagless machines, well really most bagless machines, when you're emptying them you can't avoid breathing in some of the dust. But with a bag machine like this, the dust is kept inside the bag. And as you can see, despite all the muck, including the fine flour, this machine has been used quite a lot, and yet the bag compartment is very, very clean, which proves how efficient the bag is at filtering the dust. But you also do have extra protection. There's this motor protection filter, But apart from some very fine hair on there, little, I don't know what that is, it is pretty clean and I've never had to change this, I've used this machine a lot as I say because the bags are so efficient at keeping the dust in. We have the final filter here, Miele recommend about once a year, I think it's about 50 hours but this machine will tell you when they recommend a replacement. The newer versions of this do actually have a timeline strip so it actually tells you when it needs replacing. So again, these can be quite expensive. They're about 20 something pounds in the UK. I'm not sure how much they cost in the USA, but that is a factor that you'll need to think about when choosing a Miele. Right, to sum up, would I recommend this Miele vacuum cleaner? Well, yes, I would, but with a few provisos. Now if you can still buy this vacuum cleaner in the UK you'll be very lucky because it is a discontinued model. It may still be available in other countries and in America it might be available under the Capricorn name. But I'm just summing up what I think of this particular Miele model. The performance on carpets with the power head is fantastic. I can't fault that. It gets 5 out of 5. Not many vacuum cleaners get a 5 out of 5 from me for performance on carpets. Not so good on hard floors, a bit disappointing with the larger particles, but I did put a lot of mess down. It will get everything in the end, I did pick up everything that I put down using this machine, but I did have to tilt the nozzle. 
wasn't very good using the power head with the brush turned off, better using the standard nozzle and even better using the optional parquet twister nozzle. What do you have to take into account when buying a Miele? Well, first of all, the price of the machine to start with, they are quite pricey. If you can pick one up um, from Goodwill, I believe you have in America, we call them charity shops in the UK. If you can pick one up from Goodwill for a few bucks, then yes, go for it if it's working. If you have to pay full retail price for one of these, my recommendation, if the vacuum seller, the retailer, does offer you an extended warranty, or if Miele do, I would take it on this particular machine. I'm not a fan of extended warranties per se, but when it comes to a Miele machine that has a power hose, a remote control and a power nozzle, then I think it may be worth you spending a little bit extra on an extended warranty. Because although they are tested, according to Miele, to last 20 years, they don't really. Most modern Miele vacuum cleaners won't last that long. And I have read about reliability problems with powerhead machines that have the power hose. The connections in the hose can fail. That's quite a common fault. The machine itself can be fine, but once the hose is faulty, then the machine is basically useless without having the facility to be able to turn it on and off using the remote. So extend the warranty if you can, or buy it from an independent dealer who will offer you the servicing. Miele do currently they do offer a 10-year, optional 10-year guarantee on their vacuum cleaners. It used to be about £30. So if you're spending a lot on a vacuum, especially if you decide to go for the Miele Powerhead model that has just been launched in the UK, which costs, according to Miele, the recommended price is £600. If you're buying that model, yes, get the warranty. Definitely get it. Because in the UK, they only have a standard warranty of two years. Saying that, it's still a very good machine. The hose on this model could be a bit longer. I believe on the S8 variants it is a bit longer. It's quite heavy and the cord again could be longer, but that's again something Miele have addressed with the S8s. The cord is a bit longer than on the S5 series. Saying that, of course, you've got to buy bags. Again, they are fairly pricey, but it's always best to spend a bit extra and get the genuine Miele bags. They are fantastic. You can use them to full capacity, and I mean full to bursting almost, before you have to replace them. You will not notice a, a dramatic drop in performance or suction when you're using the high clean bag. Also, once a year, change the filter. And also keep an eye on the motor protection filter as well. They normally supply the motor protection filter inside the pack of bags and you also get the normal standard air clean filter but in this model you can't use it without a special adapter. I'm not sure if it came with it, it might have done actually. But you can, if you don't feel you need to replace the HEPA filter, there are cheaper variants of filters available that you can replace after you've used four bags or so. But if you really want clean air then the HEPA really is the way to go if you've got allergies, asthma or anything and anybody in your family suffers from any dust related allergy then the Miele is very good at filtering out all that dust that you pick up from your carpets and your upholstery. So go for it. If you can get hold of this model and you really want deep clean carpets you need the benefit of a power head it's fantastic. If your flooring is mainly hard floors and you've got a few rugs, not many carpets, then I don't think it's worth spending the extra money on a power nozzle cleaner. Just get a straight suction mealer, possibly spend a bit extra on the parquet twister nozzle if you've got lots of laminate or real wood floors to clean. And if you've got pets and you don't want to fork out, in the UK anyway, £600 for the latest powerhead model, you can look at one of their cat and dog variants, or of course look at one of the Miele Upright Cleaners. But that's ideal if you've got lots of carpet. I wouldn't recommend the Miele Upright Cleaner if you live in a smaller home that doesn't have many carpets. It's a big, hefty beast. If you live in a larger home with lots of wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, that's another machine I would recommend. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more reviews and news on various vacuum cleaners, search my channel. There's an awful lot of content on there. 
And if you want to be updated every time I upload something new, please subscribe and you'll be part of my exclusive list of subscribers who get to know firsthand what I upload. If you're interested, many of you are, some of you aren't. If you're not, don't subscribe. It's not going to make me lose any sleep, I can assure you. But anyway, this is a great vacuum. I'll see you again very soon.